Governor Brian Kemp. They had a debate Monday night. Herschel Walker is running against current Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock. Walker didn't even bother to show up for the second debate on Sunday night, but Libertarian candidate Chase Oliver did. And there's Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course, who is being challenged by moderate Democrat Marcus Flowers. They also had a debate this week. Early voting began in Georgia Monday, with voters already casting ballots en masse. In fact, they broke the first day early voting record. First day turnout nearly doubled since the 2018 midterm elections. And it gets even more impressive. Georgia Public Broadcasting says the state surpassed the turnout ahead of the 2020 presidential election during the second day of early voting, which is definitely not typical during a midterm year. Those statistics are even more interesting, considering that there's a new provision in the state's new election law that allows, quote, any resident to challenge the qualifications of an unlimited number of voters within their county. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says tens of thousands of voters' eligibilities were questioned just this year. Joining me now to talk about all of this is Latasha Brown. She's the co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Latasha, it is an honor to have you join my show. I needed to have you here because we need to figure out what is going on in Georgia. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says as many as 65,000 voter eligibility challenges have been filed this year. County election officials have so far rejected most of them. So my question for you, how are voting rights groups attempting to protect voters who are just exercising their constitutional right to vote and to fight back against these BS challenges? You know, I want people to just to understand how this came about, right? After the 2020 election, when we had this special runoff Senate election in 2021, the first legislative session where we broke records in terms of voter turnout, you saw this SB202 bill that was passed and signed in law and pushed by the Republicans and by the uh, Brian Kemp. And this particular law did a number of things. What we call it is it was the chief blueprint for voter suppression. And one of the things that it gave the power is for any resident in the state of Georgia to be able to challenge a resident for no basis, just to say, I don't think you're a legitimate voter. And as a result, what we saw is in Gwinnett County, which is the most diverse county in the state of Georgia, we saw with 37,000 voters just indiscriminately challenged alone in that process. And so part of what how we've gotten here is this has been an ongoing fight. We have been screaming from the rafters, voter suppression is real. And that's what we're dealing with in Georgia. You know, and there are those that say that the, the turnout is indicative that voter suppression is not working. No, the turnout is indicative that groups like ours and others and voters are determined to literally push through the fact that voter suppression is happening in this state. And so groups like ours, we have been working ongoing. Since the 2020 election, we have not stopped. You know, I would I would love to say that at some point in the election, there's ebbs and flows, there are ups and downs. But what we've seen is that we've had to continue. We've gone out of a major from the from the uh, uh, the presidential election to a Senate special runoff, and then immediately into fighting around voting rights. And so, what we're seeing is groups on the ground are doing a number of things. One, we have been getting doing a lot of voter education. Well, our organization, the last month, we've actually contacted over 160,000 rural voters directly that we think in many ways are most vulnerable. In addition to that, we have organizations that are working throughout the state, grassroots groups that are, one, giving out voter education information and also giving information to voters for them to check their status. In addition to that, we've had ongoing voter registration campaigns where some voters who should not have needed to be able to, to register again. They were kicked off the uh, voting rolls. We looked into the process, but also helped them to get re-registered. And then, and, and most importantly, at this point, we're letting people know that an election is happening. We've actually kicked off a tour throughout the state, contacting the most vulnerable populations, which are young people and college-age students. We've contacted over 40,000 college students in the last month. Uh, to really be able to let them know what to look out for and to recruit poll workers to work on this election uh, during this election season. And, you know, Latasha, before I move on to my next question, I did want to point out something. These eligibility challenges, the reason why I called them BS a few minutes ago is because they are. For example, they're challenging, like, college students that didn't put their dorm room or their dorm yeah. number on their, you know, voter registration, which is absurd because, really, it's are you living there? Can you vote? If I'm living in another state, I'm not voting in Georgia. But if I'm a Georgia resident and I'm there, I should be able to vote. And in the absence of being able to vote, I am being 
disenfranchised. So my next question for you is, former President Obama heading to Georgia at the end of the month to campaign for Senator Raphael Warnock, Stacey Abrams, and other Democrats, particularly to mobilize black voters. You know, Latasha, do you think Obama's presence will be as valuable as some people are opining it's going to be right now? Because somebody like Herschel Walker, for example, said that Obama's a visit signals that perhaps Warnock and other Democrats are worried about their races. No, I think Obama's uh, attendance in Georgia speaks to something different. I think it talks about that the whole world is watching, that we know that literally the fate of democracy, that what we're seeing, the kind of voter suppression that we saw happen in Georgia, like open, avert a voter suppression, that what we're saying is we're going to fight for this democracy. We recognize that Georgia is a battlefield. And I think when we're looking at President Obama to come down, let's be clear, President Obama was able to actually have the broader, the broader base of multiracial, multigenerational voters ever in the history of this country to actually vote for him. And so I think when he's coming to Georgia, I don't think that it's just around mobilizing black voters, but I think white progressive voters, the, and the AAPI community, the Latino community, he has a message and has had appeal, particularly even with moderate Republicans. And so I think his presence uh, sends a message of three things. One, that we've got to fight for democracy. Two, that this election is important. And three, that there is a new coalition, a multiracial coalition that is rising up and that will save democracy in this nation and he, he seeks to come here to help activate that. And, you know, Latasha, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that the future of democracy is focused on the state of Georgia. So many races there. Is there one in particular that you think is the most important to watch? You know, I am really, really concerned about this gubernatorial race. I think the Stacey Abrams and the Brian Kemp race is one of the most important. You know, I, I, part of it is because I think when you look at what is happening in Georgia, you know, I think that when you're seeing the, the, the racist dog whistles that we've seen Brian Kemp, he has been voter suppressor and chief. People may recall that he used to be the secretary of state, and he put a lot of this in motion where you saw the elimination and the dropping of a hundred, hundreds of thousands of voters. And so I think that race is going to be important because I think that it has national implications, right? But I also think that it will matter for the people of Georgia. Georgia showed up for America that we need relief as well, that what mm -hmm. you're seeing is your largest inequity, economic inequity in the country right here in, in Georgia. We need real leadership. So that's one that I'm really, really keeping my eye on. This week, we learned Trump knew. I mean, we all knew that he knew. His voter fraud numbers in Georgia were false, but he signed off on that lawsuit challenging the results. Anyway, Latasha, what do you make about these revelations? I mean, it speaks directly to the idea of them trying to steal, to steal the results of people exercising their right to vote. Katie, I think that this speaks to all sense of decency, the Republicans have lost mm -hmm. all credibility. They have decided that they are going to go after power no matter what. They're willing to tear whatever they need to tear down. What we saw on January 6th, I think, is indicative of how they have been moving and how they have been um, at their leadership in this country. And I think when we're seeing Trump, that he has not only been, been the author in chief of the big, the big lie, that he's actually facilitated and operated in such a way that lacks integrity, that literally is an abuse of power, and he has literally used racial tropes that ultimately we're seeing coming out of pandemic Doris Box with the rise of white supremacy and white national. Latasha Brown, I wish I could just bottle you, sell you to everybody. Your energy is so infectious, and I'm in Florida, and honey, we need you so badly, so badly down in Florida. I've always said I wish we could take the Stacey Abrams energy, the Black Voters Matter energy, and replicate it as much as possible, and we're working on it. I promise you we are, but we I appreciate you today the taking the time. We'll be there next week. <laughs> we'll be in Florida next week. Oh, well, that's even better news. Well, thank you, Latasha Brown, for taking the time to join us on the show. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And that does it for the Katie Fang Show for now. Be sure to join us anytime on Twitter, Instagram.